Hello, welcome everyone. Hope you all are having a great day today. This is going to be our next series of our AMA at ENCODE. Uh, we will start sh shortly as people filter in a little bit, but don't hesitate to drop in the chat where you're from. It's kind of cool to see where all over the world people are joining from in the various time zones as we ha do have a global audience. It's pretty fun to see here, but awesome. We'll kind of get right into it here today. Let me just make... Um, Alex, maybe the host, so you can let individuals in if they come. Awesome. So hello, everyone. Welcome to our AMA Founder Series with Mikhail Lazarev. He's the founder and CTO at Gearbox. To start off, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Steve. I'm a program manager here at Encode Club. I will be the MC for today's AMA. If you haven't heard about us before, we're a Web3 educational community. We put on awesome programs such as boot camps, accelerators, workshops, and AMAs like this one, all with the goal in mind to educate developers and learners into Web3. The format of this AMA will start off with me asking a few questions to our guests for the first half hour, and then we'll actually open up questions to the audience to ask later on. Once we get to that stage, we ask you to raise your hand and you can actually ask your questions live. If you're unsure how to do that, you can click on the reactions button at the bottom of your screen and then it'll come up with click raise hand. I will call on individuals um, as they raise their hand after that. But to introduce our guest today, Mikhail is a tech lead and founder with 10 plus years of experience in software development with expert knowledge and skills in web, mobile and blockchain technologies. He has experience in developing and launching products with the tendency to launch and implement all his projects in a very short amount of time. He is familiar with all types of blockchain technologies in numerous protocols as well. A little bit about Gearbox, if you haven't heard about them, they're a generalized leverage protocol that allows anyone to take DeFi native leverage and then use it across various DeFi protocols as a composable way. You can take leverage with Gearbox and then use it to other protocols you already love, such as Uniswap, Curve, Convex. Thanks for joining us today, Mikhail. How are you doing? Yeah, thanks. At first, uh, thanks to everybody and hello to everybody. Thanks for joining. I really appreciate your time and so many people listen to me. So feel free to ask everything and especially things to encode because it was really great experience i participated in a few hackathons and all time it was a really excellent quality and support during whole process so i'm so excited to be today as a speaker and maybe a few years ago i also joined the same ama session learning sessions to get new insights so feel free hope after this session maybe half a year we can also see you as a part of this session as well so web3 is a very very fast growing area and encode is a good way to learn it much faster than market yeah that's great we're happy to have you today and that really showcases kind of the community involvement that we've had to continue to come back around. We usually like to start off these sessions with kind of a fun personal question to get to know you a little bit better. When you were younger, what did you want to do and what is that kind of vision compared to what you're currently doing now? Oh, thanks for question. <clears throat> I think I have a different backgrounds before going to Web3. But of course, uh, my interest was in cross between some tech and math and of course, some business questions and creativity because it's a pretty boring just to focus only on science, for example, writing formulas and sometimes people who really like only abstract things feel themselves a little bit boring. And on the other side, when you create something in the cross of creativity, new technologies and business things, new concepts, it's really encourages you. 
And uh, it's why maybe I come to blockchain because people in this industry, they are really amazing. If you go at the moment to web to company, uh, it looks like a ready-made process. Everything is known and people try to compete in existing area, which is not interesting as for me. And it maybe was for my whole life the most interesting task that you never know how to solve. So you always start from scratch and try to understand what to do, <laughs> what's next. Try to connect new people, try to figure out new knowledge. And I've heard about Bitcoin maybe in 2015. But of course, I was so stupid. I didn't recognize that it's a big thing. And uh, these days I finished my MBA classes and I said, okay, I should test, but then it was too much to download the whole chain. So I forgot about, and a few years later, I was on an IT conference and many people start to talk about these technologies and I was deeply excited. So it was so great. So interesting people who really talked uh, about their inspiration, how it could change our lives. They really fountain with ideas. And I think if you go to such places and feel these guys, you should be beloved in blockchain technologies, Web3 technologies. And of course, I immediately started to learn new things. And happily, things happen pretty fast this way. Um, a few months later, I became like a co-founder of St. Petersburg blockchain developers community. We set up uh, some meetups, usually took around three weeks between these meetups, talk about new technologies. And it was really great when new people come and discuss what's next, what's next about Ethereum these days. It was totally different. I think it was a, a Tezos these days was pretty popular and say people discuss could it become the core technology, uh, access, a ripple and so on and so on. So we really take different technologies. We discuss about pros and cons. And of course, when you really go to the, this industry, it's interesting to take and at least test what you can do with this technology. So my goal was not only work as a developer, but try to implement something new, participate in different hackathons and why I really appreciate uh, Encode Club. It was really great experience. Uh, I learned a lot. And uh, then when, we, when I make like a hypothesis about Gearbox, about some uh, leverage in Web3, what was a pretty new idea, um, it took some traction and then two years ago when the project became the finalist of S Global, uh, I team up with Elgis and Ivan from Lobster Dow, and then together at Three of Purple we start uh, working on the protocol and all others you can find on our Twitter, I don't know, hit, hit some medium articles about the product development and so on and so on. Yeah, that's great. There was a bunch of background there that we would love to unpack a little bit more. Can you tell us kind of that process of that first, you know, hackathon you went through? Um, you know, it sounds like that was a big part of it. And, you know, a lot of our listeners here today go through hackathons and they can totally re relate to your story. Uh, yeah, uh, I think maybe I have a really uh, big experience in hackathons and still I believe if I would have more time, I definitely want to participate in a few more. Because as for me, the biggest point here is that you can create something new for a very short period of time. But uh, maybe COVID times uh, made these hackathons more interesting for me because as it was before, and I participated in some artificial intelligence hackathons and some different industries, it took around a weekend. So usually you start on Friday, you met people, and then you should deliver something till the Sunday afternoon, pretty short time. 
So people, when you meet something uh, as a person, you have not enough time to really learn new, uh, something new. And there are maybe a few things. Of course, you can come with ready-made project at least in your hand. It doesn't mean that you should develop something, but at first you should have a clear picture what you want to implement. Uh, but during COVID times, there were hackathons which took place around a few weeks. And it was really a game changer for me because you can start to think about, you can ask different people, you can test your hypothesis, you can speak with mentors, and there is no rush. So usually it's enough time to make a clear vision what you are going to build. And then you have enough time to implement and learn new things. So if I remember correctly, for ENCODE, the first project was connected and related with Tezos and it was a platform for for investments for factoring investments yeah so if your company like want to take money it was in 2020 or something like that and it was really pretty interesting news so I really take uh, how this technology work and was able to build the project and then of course when DeFi come to scene and uh, definitely you can understand how DeFi works and new achievements, of course, I totally swap to DeFi. I think it's the most interesting industry in blockchain for me at least. Yeah, that's great. That kind of leads me to uh, how did you initially come up with the idea and kind of the background behind Gearbox and see the need for kind of the products that you produce? In the oh, it's a, yeah. Thanks for question. It was a pretty easy. So of course, I believe the biggest uh, point for creativity and the biggest way to take a good idea is to speak with other people to learn from them and discuss what's going on the market. So I met some friends and they said, "Hey, now we are going to make a standard." order book with leverage to make a decentralized exchange which people could go and get leverage and trade there uh, but the idea was is something like zero x or other decentralized exchanges with connected leverage and it was their idea and i start thinking hey it's a pretty difficult to run your own exchange you need at least liquidity, you need at least marketing, you should do a lot of stuff and it doesn't seem a pretty easy way to implement. What if I can do Uniswap with leverage? Because Uniswap has already user base, Uniswap has already liquidity. So my goal is to make a one plugin which could be connected to Uniswap and together we can create totally new experience for users because users like Uniswap, many people switch from centralized exchanges to decentralized exchange and Uniswap is the leader on this market, of course. And if I can make this, it could be done. And these days, of course, I also read different papers about AMM, about Curve, Uniswap and many others who want to start. So I was pretty familiar with Uniswap contracts and other contracts as well. So it, they was like inspiration and combining these two experience, it was a pretty easy to build small prototype and show it on uh, as global hackathon and say, yeah, it's real. So basically, and after that, when we team up with Ilkis and I, when we decide, hey, now we can do this trick with Uniswap. Why we should stop on Uniswap? Why we do not want to add Curve? And then we decided to add Yearn. And now I think around seven different protocols could work with Gearbox and much more in the future. Great, thanks so much. That's awesome. A little bit more on Gearbox and kind of the market. How do you guys see yourself kind of adapting in kind of these times of uncertainty and, you know, maybe people are trading less and using less leverage? Um, are like more products 
you know, produced or kind of how do you go about future thinking? Uh, at Gear? Oh, yeah, I think maybe, uh, I don't know, is it right or not? I'm more technical person than business strategies. So, uh, but uh, in my perception, I, as I already mentioned, I really like how tech work. And all what we have today, and especially in business, how we interact using Zoom, how we are doing business, at first was invented on the tech side, and then it changed our behavior of doing things. So as I could see from the technical point, Gearbox wants to be like a leverage layer it's not like a product, it's more about infrastructure solution, which could help other protocols to enable leverage and provide better experience for the users. It's like a car, you can have a shop, then you buy a car and you can do much more. When you have a car, you can go like sail somewhere, you can transfer things and so on and so on. So we help other protocols to create leverage experience. And uh, this strategy create much more interesting technical uh, tasks than just to build interface and something like that. So we try to make a general solution. We try to make something what maybe Uniswap make a bigger innovation when they say, hey guys, now everyone put list token on our exchange, create pairs, and it works. So, of course, maybe in the future, we could definitely find the way that any protocol could use Gearbox technology to start leverage on them and be connected to this leverage layer. At this time, we made a few steps. Now we are working on V2 to make this process much easier to open great API for developers who want to build upon Gearbox, who want to be connected. And uh, it's why we talk about composability. And it's a really amazing thing. So definitely it could not be done in the real world because in the real world, each financial company want to really do everything for you. So my bank want to order me insurance, debts, uh, accounts, investments, products, and bank want to be only one company which covers all my needs. But basically bank do not really make all these products great. So basically people uh, should to switch different things. And on DeFi, we have a composability which helps us to really empower each other. So Gearbox empowers Uniswap to make possible margin trading. Now Gearbox working on a big uh, layer of uh, LP tokens like Yorn, Convex, Curve and so on and so on. So the next big things I believe is leverage staking and uh, leverage farming which could be available for our users with launching v2 and there we made a really great job for gas efficiency so our goal is to make like around zero uh, price for using leverage help people to earn more to make their strategies better and focus on technical side so the best way when developers start to use our technology our pools and really build new amazing products and in this composability we together could build a really great web3 world yeah that's great i really loved your analogy at the beginning there with infrastructure and kind of gearbox um a little bit more on kind of being a founder and you said you kind of you're close to that dev side and kind of the dev uh, responsibilities what would you say is like the best or most important skills as kind of a technical founder to have uh, when creating kind of a startup? Oh, great question. Uh, at first, I want to say that it's not like a, I don't know, a solo founder. I'm pretty happy to work with people who 
was at start with me like Ivan and Elgis and then we set up DAO and uh, it was very, very beneficial because uh, uh, in comparison with, with Web2 company, maybe now we are at the beginning of the industry and of course I'm pretty scared that maybe in a five or 10 years Web3 developer would be like uh, ordinary developer or HTML developer, so many people, but now a lot of talented, maybe best talents come to Web3, so a lot of people with uh, a lot of uh, motivation, interest to learn something new and so on and so on. It's why DAO and attracting people to do what they want is the best strategy, I think, so, so many people join us and the best people was who really uh, follow us who check github repository and say hey i'd like to join and do this stuff or i can really help with this so we do not work like an ordinary company it's more like a decentralized organization where people have self-motivation self-esteem they really do and they see the perspective in their mind. So we have no like schedule or something like that, or uh, very boring things which happens in corporation. A lot of inspiration and freedom for everyone who join us. And in this case, I think we should really have time to listen to each other and try to help each other, support, uh and discuss just a vision so because many people have the same vision and maybe it's why pretty at the beginning you should grow a little bit slower than uh authoritative way of doing things of course if you can say hey guys you do that you do that please give me results to five o'clock and then you do some micromanagement task it's what i want not want to do, uh, but when you make great vision, when people could really offer and suggest their idea, and uh, we can discuss it, we can discuss on Discord, we can set up a call, we can write an article, everything. With this, a lot of ideas, people more motivated, and really, it's a pretty easy to build with such guys in our DAO. So nothing special, just find right people around you and you will be really happy to work with them. That's great. That's some great insight to kind of showcase the difference. I'm sure from your background of, you know, multiple years of development at the kind of corporate level to kind of what we do now in Web3 and the different age of DAOs and more of a community uh, approach to development. Um, would you say that's um, like harder to manage, you know, people or how do you kind of motivate? You said they're usually self-starters that kind of join and yes. um, kind of, but how do you have a shared mission or a shared kind of uh, inspiration to work, work for if they're all individuals scattered around the globe? I think maybe it's a really great uh the people who come to the industry is going through this hackathon school people who try to do and implement something so uh maybe the best uh insight i can share that you should it should take time to find the right people so if you feel that this person uh, requires more time to really focus on behavior things. So if you met a person and you said, hey, guy, you forgot to do that, and you try to manage this person, you want to change this person, it's not what a good way to do things in Web3. Instead of that, if you find uh, some crazy guy who all the fountain with details and you can speak like a friend you can share everything be open um, just talk what you are really worrying about and it's especially significant because we work with smart contract development 
there are a lot of potential threats. You should be a little bit crazy guy who do not trust any line of code. So at this case, you can really try to find people who share your values, who understand you, and uh, then try to build a few guys around you with the same values. And now your team is done. Now you can really build something. And the best way in my case is these two or three weeks hackathons where when you can meet, meet something and try to work together. If you can really work together productive, if you inspire each other, great. You found the best insights through the hackathon. It's not prizes. It's not uh, learning, of course, new people who really could help you to grow faster and build together. It's a great source of inspiration. I think that shows it tentament to go to hackathons and really be able to learn and engage and like you said kind of find your peers and founders uh, switching a little gears over to kind of like you know blockchain and uh, kind of web3 in general we just kind of had the merge that just happened and you know you're very involved within ethereum do you have any thoughts on kind of how that went and you see the seat the future of ethereum and kind of the future of blockchain having a successful event there yeah, at the first point, I definitely, when merge happened, it was pretty fun. Uh, I really missed the date, so I was just working, writing code, and oops, we tried to develop something for test purposes on mainnet, and it was like a peak of gas prices. I decided, ah, oh, what's happened? The gas price was around seven previous, and so now it's six or something like that. Oh, merge happened. And what I really like in blockchain technology that so fundamental change was done automatically. So if you launch any project on Web2, you know when you launch, a lot of people come, there is a problem with loading, server could not work, some bugs. So it's always very, very nervous process. And with a zero merge, it was really fantastic. So users do not even understood that merge happened because nothing was changed only on Ether scan. You can read now, happy merge. And of course I go to Twitter and many people start to congratulate each other. It's a great way a lot of technology behind very, very good research about game theory, about mass. And for any user, it was amazingly cool. So just com in comparison, when, uh, for example, Apple delivers their iOS and a few weeks later, they make some patches, say, hey, we have mistake here and here, it doesn't work and so on and so on. So blockchain technology, very robust. It's a really amazing. And it's also pretty interesting that now we have some challenges. Uh, of course, because the system was changed, we take a lot of attention for, as for me personally, about potential attacks. So previously on proof of work, it was very rare to really mine a few blocks in a row with pulse blockchain it's possible you can a little bit game and do a few operations wherever you want in a few block so we start to think about new attack scenario but anyhow i believe it's a future if you can make it robust if you can make it more reliable it's the first step to for scaling and scaling is a key for mass adoption when people could really switch from their old technology to a new one that's great you kind of hit on this with the end of your answer there uh with the attacks you know thinking about post-merge um kind of how the box blocks are created for us kind of non-developers are still learning in this space is there any is the process of developing you know with proof of work now kind of proof of stake any different in the process of going about it or is that kind of normally stayed the same other than thinking about those attacks 
Yeah, so basically in in general, uh, the things was changed that previously uh, to increase the probability of block creation, you should invest a lot of money into infrastructure, I mean, computer, ASICs, and so on, special devices which try to figure out better hashes and solve the puzzle. So I think it's like the basic idea which was uh, suggested by Satoshi Nakamoto and uh, Bitcoin based on it. And in uh, post networks, it depends on your capital. So when you really validate a block, you make a stake on it. And if your validation is incorrect, you lose your stake. So it's another part of game theory. But by the way, only time would solve is there any some potential threats or not. Of course, the great outcomes at the moment that Ethereum become more green blockchain than Bitcoin and so on and so on because energy consumption was dramatically reduced. And when I read that switching to pause reduce 0.2% of global energy consumption, I was deeply impressed. Just imagine if it's like uh, 0.2% of all global energy production for whole world was used for Ethereum. Incredible amount of energy and now blockchain became more uh, interesting. And then another part, it's a pretty interesting that uh, by architecture, Ethereum became more difficult. So now we have a different layer. We have a beacon layer, which is used for validators. We have uh, some execution layer, which is used for people who uh, run existing EVM code. And it's interesting that you as developers could start think maybe new crazy idea how blockchain could work and you can use a part of infrastructure so for example if you want to run your own network you can build something up on become uh, layer and do something new and your blockchain would be also very very robust and all transactions would be validated with huge amount of capital so it creates new opportunities for people to build something totally new with the same level of robustness and running on a zero and it's also pretty cool things which could be done maybe it's a little bit closer with Polkadot, which have similar, not similar, but some outcomes. So when you run different chains on Polkadot and the same you can do in Ethereum, so pretty cool. Yeah, that's great. It's great to finish it up there. We'll start actually taking questions from the audience. So if there's anybody that has a live question that would like to answer. You hear me? I heard him say uh, yes. we should pass participate more in hackathons and you know i'm just wondering do you have to like reach a certain skill level before you go join a hackathon um would you just do do you have like a certain skill level you need to attain before you join a hackathon mm. uh so at this case what i really suggest uh of course, be open for new things. Everything is doable. So, of course, as for me, it was a little bit easier. I have some IT background, but definitely I really like to learn something new. So, happily, if you really have any questions uh, in hackathons, you can find mentors. You can write directly to protocol developers and ask them. You can find a lot of information via internet. So please do not wait the best time. Like I should be educated for 10 years and then I would go and do something. I think it's a wrong strategy. 
just a try, take a try. And definitely you can find it's much easier than you expect to learn something new, uh, new. And if you need more skill, for example, if you're good at solidity development and you are not familiar with front end, find the person who could work on front end just not to learn everything by yourself and really focus on things you know and you want to learn at least. Great. Thanks so much, Abdul, for your question. Um, I think I saw another hand raised, but they went away. Let me know if I miss you on that, but we'll start feeling some other questions out. This is kind of a two part that somewhat go together. Um, can you tell us a little bit how you got into software development and kind of some of the projects you worked on before and how that kind of brought you to an influence um, starting Gearbox? Mm. So basically, uh, I started from very, very old computers uh, like Synchro ZX Spectrum when I was a child. So I uh, had uh, learned different things all my life. Even if I'm some part of it do not work as developer, I really like to automate things and to be related. Uh, work with different projects, even try to start uh different things but maybe uh more interesting here is that i think in 2018 or something like that we tried to launch the project which is called token starter and the idea was is to make uh, some partial investment during this ico era was what was a pretty crazy we really worrying about people who lose money. So the idea was is to make a few chunks of money and create some options so the project should deliver something and they could really get some portion. But then of course BR market came and the project was not developed yet. So basically never give up. Uh, after that. Uh, I participated in many hackathons, work with different projects. And sometimes when you really understand from different people and meet them, you can really find a good idea. So as I already mentioned, the best way is to do that is to talk with other people and learn from them what is really work. Great. Thanks so much for that. Let's, we do have another question. Um, uh, starting out um, uh, idea, how does one get to reach like um, the exact target investors for um, an idea in the Web3 space? And um, also, how does one get to, yeah, you spoke earlier concerning having to speak with persons to get um, ideas from them. But then I'd like to know also, in cases whereby um, one is restricted with um, getting information on certain ideas and then um, the whole lot of bunch of ideas out there are like the generic ones, how does one tend to fine tune these ideas into a more suitable one? For I now, I never targeted them to be honest, and uh, maybe it's a good sign if you do something interesting, people really want to speak with you. So, basically, uh, how to say, uh, try to really offer something new and something which could be useful for other people because. Uh, to be honest, after the demo day uh, of Gearbox, a lot of people really start to call. You can open your contacts and then start to discuss different things. So I believe if you really need to do a lot of extra work to attract investors and so on and so on, maybe it's better to change initial idea or test it better. Uh, otherwise, it... Uh, if they are not interested in, we are really happy to work in Web3. It's a very, very uh, innovative part of the industry. A lot of new projects, a lot of new ideas come here. So many people are looking through. So at this case, uh, maybe 
the best strategy not to try to focus on something which has no initial traction and try to offer it in a few iterations. Maybe it's better to test something new, maybe make a pivot or offer a different idea to find the initial traction and then people start to follow you and ask how they could help so maybe here this question and know answer thank you um looks like we have another one from arthur or arthur uh you mentioned uh, the first step of building uh, project in web3 it was set up in the dao and uh, could you tell me how long you run solely this project as a DAO without set up being, without paying lawyers and set up some more formal structure. How long you can, uh, oh. I understand that it will be not legal advice, but just from your uh, No, it's, like, it's, it's not legal advice. And uh, I was not focused on these legal questions with Ilgis and Ivan were more connected with this legal stuff. So, uh, Maybe it's better to ask the Ilgis, uh, I don't know if it's if he on a call or not. So basically, I think it's not so maybe interesting part because from my point of view, tech part is a key of interest, but basically all this uh, legal stuff more related writing terms of usage and so on and so on so nothing interesting at my point i believe most significant is to really i talked about DAO at k in k is that how to manage other people how to attract them because when people come uh, because they like what you're doing is much better than you try to pay some uh, HR specialist who could go through Telegram chats and ask people to work for you because we already tried to do that, but the result was not really great. Maybe we have not experience to hire these talents, but as I already <clears throat> mentioned, the best way to find best people is to really uh, work with uh, uh, people who already know to know about your project and like it. So in this case, there is no special requirements to work together. So uh, I spent 10 years working for traditional finance and uh, recruiting is really hard. Yeah, so, but uh, as I already mentioned, so we choose maybe a pretty, so I don't know how to correct. The correct way in Web3, it's a very, very, new and innovative thing but now i can see a people who really share values and ideas who really are developers who want to learn new thing and it's a really great to work with them and another part people who listen hey this is a big salary let's try to do that and these people are pretty boring the biggest problem when you start to work with technology, which is not well developed yet. So of course, when you work with React, for example, maybe 30% of all website in the world built on React. So it's a well known, a lot of people know that. So you can simply find answer for any question. When you go to Web3, you will, always faced with a question which has no answers on stack overflow we you can find something easily and in this case you should be able as a developer to learn new things to make some experiments to connect with other people and it's why we need people we need person who share these values to figure out how things happens. It's why I believe hackathons is a good school because you also have a lot of unclear things. You have a lot of uncertainty. And when you start to find the solution for a case which is not well known, it's a good skill which all Web3 developers should have. It's why I believe when people come to your project and want to really contribute it's a great 
if the people know something and also you can check uh, background, talk a little bit and people understood your mission, uh, he could definitely find a totally new way of doing things. It's okay. You shouldn't really set up very narrow things. Hey, you do this way. You only work on this window and make limits for people like it happens in traditional banking software. So I have a few developers who work for a banking application and usually it's a huge team which work only one button. And I don't know what you can really invent, how you can inspire because what you're focusing for a year is just a button which I don't know, uh, do a very, very small task. In Web3, you can definitely make much bigger and interesting things. It's why I think people should have a maybe more generalist uh, vision and uh, be more involved in way to solve problems. Uh, one point on what you mentioned about this button, because like many people that they're, uh, they don't like blockchain, they try to compare blockchain with, for example, Oracle and claim, okay, with Oracle, you have 1 million more uh, transactions per second, but then you have the whole team working on the single button. Yes, and the biggest problem, if you really try to compare how project happens in DeFi and traditional banking, it's a totally different. So if you just consider then US bank want to start pilot with every pin bank, they at first of course a five years of lawyers what you asked in before yeah maybe budget for 200 million just to make agreement how to share data how to start this testing environment then they will find that some piece of software written in very very old technology uh, the programming language from the 60s Another part from Java, they try to build cross teams, they try to build different interfaces. So to make first line of code, a lot of preparation. In Web3, totally opposite. If you want to work with Uniswap, please work with Uniswap. You should not ask any permission. If you want to work with Gearbox, please work with Gearbox. We have open API, do whatever you want. And composability is a great feature, which really make innovations much, much faster. And I don't know any other technologies when people could simply integrate two different corporations, so simple how it happens on uh, blockchain. It's really amazing. Uh, one last point, what you mentioned yeah, yeah, sure. is not on, it's not only between like two different corporations. I know this from my first experience. I was doing regulatory project, uh, anti-money laundering for one of the Belgian banks. And it was, we had our regulator on our backs. So the time pressure was really crucial. We could lose the license or get like crazy amount of fine. And very small piece of data was missing from our mother uh, corporation in Paris. And it took six months to get like- Oh my data. God. Oh my God. And like you countless meetings and discussion, you, you, you cannot believe it. Yes, and happily you are on Web3 and uh, share this point. Uh, tell people that innovations could be done much faster than <clears throat> in original financial system. And of course, uh, maybe with the latest moving up and down for exchange rates, it's also pretty interesting when people say, hey, we have a pretty stable currency and blockchain are very volatile, but <laughs> last week pound movements make a little bit different for everyone. Now, I don't know, really, I am not a trader. I just check in the data and graphs I like how they look and they think at first it was some cryptocurrency, but then, oh, it's a pound, wow. <laughs> Another shit coin. <laughs> I didn't speak so, yeah, but, but it was fun. Br yeah, British really. peso. 
Thanks for the questions. We got a couple more here as we have a few more minutes. Sebastian, do you want to go next as you had your hand up first? Hi, um, I have a question related to the kind of problems that we can solve in a hackathon. What kind of real life um, problems do you think are better to tackle in, in a hackathon related to the DeFi space? Thank you. Mm. Can you explain what mean uh, what do you mean as real life problems? Because uh, what I really found when people try to build something like pizzeria with blockchain payments or try to copy some existing business model, it does not work. So basically as uh, Bill Gates said, we do not need banks, we need banking. So we should definitely separate what people need and how they do it today. The biggest maybe innovation in Gearbox that we remove middlemen like a brokerage. So in real life, if you want to get leverage, you should go to some brokerage firm and you should trust this brokerage firm. Uh, with lending protocols, with uh, leveraging protocols, you shouldn't go to some company and trust it. You can use the protocol which really makes all things happen and proven using math, uh, computer science, and so on and so on. So in terms of hackathon, I believe you should find maybe some need. And of course, when we talk about uh, blockchain, mm, it has uh, some good profiles to things which could be solved using blockchains. It's, of course, finance, it's different proofs, it's trust, and so on and so on. So try to figure, <coughs> to figure out inefficiency or <coughs> sorry, additional trust you are not willing to do in real world and try to do... Um, in totally different war, in totally different way, how it could be done using blockchain technology. Awesome. Thanks for the question. We have one more here. How are the is software development cycles in your company or in Web3 company in general different from you know software de development cycle in a, you know tech startups or traditional tech startups? Thank you. Oh. It's a really, really great question because basically the biggest difference when we talk about Web3, it's of course related to smart contract developer. Because when you talk about front-end application, of course, they use a little bit different technology, but by the way, your web application could be updated pretty fast. And the biggest problem with uh, smart contracts that you should really make some piece of robust software, then you can test it on your own. You can write a lot of unit test, fork test, and so on and so on. And when you deliver working system, you do not control it, of course, because it's a decentralized system. And in this ways, you should take much more time for security question you should definitely understand and try to find different vector of attacks for your protocol. You should really get up and start thinking, hey, how people could try to steal money, how people could try to make problem for our protocol at any case. And at this way, I believe that in blockchain, you should really invest much more time even for simple things because you do not control protocol. It's decentralized by its nature. And when, you de when it's deployed, it's much easier and more difficult at the same time. So there is no operational things like in ordinary web too. So you should not control that your servers online, for example, like it happened in Web to you do not focus on questions related to a lot and so on and so on because all big part of this stuff are 
done by miners or validators now so they do all these operational things for you it's a great achievement on the other stuff it's not so easy for example when you find some potential threat like in real banking what we talked before the team even could really stop operations as you know many banks when you log into your online bank you say hey we have a main days for a few hours please wait and it's okay for people in blockchain you can do this so i think uh it takes more time to really write smart contracts, test them, then go through security audits, really get different piece of, of opinions that it should work and prove it. And when it's deployed, of course, you can only get the analytics, which is available uh, from on-chain events. And there is no way to gather additional information like in web to pretty common when Google know everything about you, even they track uh, how you press buttons in terms of timing and so on and so on. Awesome, Abdul, I think you can shoot away for the last question here. My question is, you kept on reiterating on how important hackathons are. Um, considering the fact there are very few internship opportunities in blockchain, could you assume or equate participating in hackathons with a regular internship in, you know, in Web2, you go for internships to like amp up your skill. You create um, hackathons with internships in Web3. Uh, thanks for the question. Of course, I believe that internship is a good way to learn things. When I mention hackathons and it's maybe my way, because there you can work on project wherever you want. So basically, uh when you work on some project as uh, intern it's good to learn from other people how to solve some practical things when you take the leadership and responsibility from even from your small project doing some hackathon it's amazing in terms of uh your experience because everything depends on you or your team so you try to figure out you try to be on schedule you try to really find the way how to make things easier and so on and so on so it's just a part of experience but of course good math good development skills and the way how you learn solving task of course it's another crucial part to be successful and in this case so i really happy that there are many tools for people who want to learn for example i know crypto zombie it's a very fun way to learn solidity basics and i appreciate people who just play and learn something new it's also a good way to learn new things why not so internship another way very very nice to also build some skills and knowledge why not of course thank you very much mikhail yeah and another part what i definitely also suggest to learn things to be more successful maybe in hackathons and so on and so on try to learn code which was developed by great defy protocol so for me personally i learned a lot of different things just reading our ah, smart contracts uh Uniswap smart contracts and so on and so on. When you try to read and understand why people solve this task this way, of course, you also make a better code style. You learn how people solve real tasks. You try to understand why they choose this solution. And it also creates additional way how problems could be solved. Do not try to invent something from your head. Take another experience and then create something new using what other people also did that's some great thank you very much thank you so much mikhail thanks so much for joining us today and kind of sharing your insight of being a founder and a developer kind of as an ever progressing web3 space any last things you'd like to share or how to maybe follow you or uh get in contact with gearbox or interact with 
kind of your bounties, anything you would like to share on that point? I believe that what we should definitely is uh, make Web3 better ways. So basically, maybe it's a pretty common, but uh, I'm so happy when uh, meet developers who build something new. Of course, I would be uh, twice more inspired if someone would start to build on Gearbox. But anyhow, DeFi, blockchain and so on, it's so huge and very, very innovative and interesting industry. So be inspired, move forward, create your own project, be successful. And at the moment in Web3, we do not compete with each other. Uh, the best way what we, I really found is that we could work together through composability. We focus on leverage. Someone create new AMM and other people build a new protocol for something, I don't know, social network, social capital, and so on and so on. And blockchain help us to work together, connect us and do not really spend six months, uh, six months of legal paperwork, as it was mentioned today, to make an agreement and share data. We could work together to make this Web3 real and make it really uh, common use all over the world. So thanks and code for your mission to teach people to attract people, to inspire them, to support them. So hope maybe pretty soon we will see much more projects in Web3, which solve a lot of different problem programs. And together we will help people to build more decentralized and better world. That's some great uh, final words there. Couldn't have said it better. Thanks so much again, Mikhail. Thank you. You taking the time and continuing to teach our ecosystem and our learners here to maybe they'll be inspired and like you said build the next great thing within web3 thanks everyone to join and ask questions for today uh we do have another big harmony event tomorrow if you're interested in joining a hackathon uh you can join that one tomorrow thanks everyone thanks again mikhail have a great rest thank of you your thank you have a nice day guys bye bye